What's going on guys? Welcome to today's video goes into tomorrow kind of thing. Anyway, dad and I have been out searching for the fish for a couple of days and we finally found some. We had to make a couple of moves. We're going to talk about some of those strategies as in moving off a rock, moving out to the mud flats and also the time of day that we're setting to avoid the turtles, avoid the crabs, things like that that are kind of putting a kink in our giddy up. So, but we're all set and dad and I are going to head out in the morning couple of hours from now and we will pick up the video then so actually I'll see you in a couple of hours and I wake up we're gonna be in the fish right now well good morning guys we are back it is morning time and I got you here in my kitchen with me because I can't take you outside because in Texas we got a little thing called humidity and you won't be able to see me and I won't be able to see you we're just gonna grab some coffee and go meet up with dad and we gotta go check our perch traps and see what, that's one thing we're using for these lines is we're using fresh perch, uh, probably a couple of bluegill thrown in there. We're running these trout lines for catfish, so we've also had some homemade traps that have been working really good and we're gonna go over some of those in a few days. That's been a really interesting, cool project. Hopefully we get out there today and spend some time together and hopefully these lines are hot to trot and we bring home some catfish today and in a couple of days from now we'd be having a good old fashioned catfish fries, huh? So let's go find Dad and get after it. Oh, God, Dad. He broke it? He came off. Broke the hook. Dad, that was a big fish. <laughs> Dang it, man. Probably five pounds. Yeah. yeah. Put him in the back. Put him in the bottom. Hey. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. Yeah. You know some days when you do something really good and you really want to show somebody and then when you go to show them, you can't? <laughs> this is probably one of those days. But we'll get back to the house and we'll recap everything when we get there. All right, so here we are. You know, I was making this video. I was thinking, man, I'm going to have so much footage to edit out. It's going to take me a couple of days. Going to have all that, man, it's going to be a big project, but probably not going to take too long on this one, but that's okay. You know, Dad and I have been running this lake for a couple of days now and really trying to figure it out. And about the time we kind of got it figured out, I went back to work. Dad's been running lines, been pulling in seven, eight fish on a run. I get a chance to go. One fish. It was, I mean, it was a toad. It was, it was a sledge, but one fish, right? One fish to share with y'all. But, you know, that's cool, but that's why we're going to sit back go over what we've learned so far on the lake and also go over some of the laws here in Texas. So what we did figure out on the lake, a couple of key things was we're going to fish shallow. Weather's been pretty consistent. Wind is straight out of the south blowing really hard 25, 30. And we've been fishing up against the southern banks trying to get out of the wind. You know, shallow water two to four feet parallel with the bank, uh, trying to get under the vegetation and stuff like that seems to work pretty good. And if we're going to go out deeper, you got to find the mud. So anywhere from about five or six feet, uh, we had to make sure we stayed on the mud when we were on the shell. We really weren't having much luck. We took like a big eight foot stake out there to anchor our line and we really had to work to find the mud. And that's when we got on the fish. So that's what we learned about that too. Also, baiting in the morning and let it run during the day, a lot more crabs and a lot more turtles and stuff like that. So we started just baiting it five in the evening letting it run through the night, let, let it fish through the night and go run it in the morning. A lot less turtles and crabs and lost bait and things like that. So that's kind of interesting to see. You, you would think that'd be kind of maybe the opposite, but you know, hey, that's, that, that's what we're learning. 
So we've been picking up some good fish. We've been using uh, the, the homemade traps and the fresh caught perch. It seems to be working pretty good. We're probably gonna start changing it up, try some variations. You know, probably use some cut bait or some big shad that we catch, but we've just been using what we got right now and it's free. Once we made these homemade traps, we got free bait. Another thing that we learned, big bait, big fish. I think we all know that. I just was gonna point it out, you know. Big hook, big perch, big fish. That's basically what it comes down to. The fish we caught today was on big eagle claw hook. Had a big perch on it, and that's we only put those on the eagle claws, and that fish was, you know, every bit of, you know, seven or eight pounds. So awesome fish, pulled up a, you know, at least we made a meal out of it. Makes makes the trip worth it. So other than that, you know, we're, we're really getting familiar. You know, it's been several years since Dad and I have, have run lines like this, but you know, Dad's been doing it for 50 years. It's a great opportunity for us to spend time together, and I encourage anybody out there, you know, this is a, a real laid back way to fish, have fun with kids, you know, with your parents, with your grandparents, and some of the best memories, you know, that you can make is running trot lines, because it's just fun to see fish, catch fish, learn the bodies of water, and this is, Dad's been doing this, he gets, he, I, he, we lost some fish the other day. He was he was so he was more upset than when he botched that shot at that ten point last deer season. He was upset, mad at me because I wasn't fast enough with the net. But we're not going to get into that. But anyway, we're going to cover some of the laws here in Texas. So it's pretty interesting. It's really not that complicated. You know, you got you know less than fifty hooks on a run. You can't use a buoy marker. <clears throat> you can't use a jug marker that is orange in color. If you're going to when you do use a jug marker. You've got to, it's got to be six inches long. It's got to be three inches in diameter, and you have to mark it with some of your personal information, name and address, or name and contact information. The date you put it out, when you when you go fish, and you put it out. It's really only good for six days. And I'll include the link in the description, like I mentioned earlier. You guys can go check all this out and verify it for yourself. With the jug line, that's going to be your gear date, the hooks. No community lakes. So if you have like a neighborhood, like a master community with a shared lake system, you cannot trot line in those. Oh, I got something in my eye. And also, you can't trot line in a lot of state parks, and there's a whole list of state parks that really make it basically make it clear so that way you don't screw anything up. But you can't trot line in state parks. If you're gonna get out in the open water, you gotta you're gonna have a stake, you know, to mark your line. It's got to be below water surface, and it can be no metal. So, and that, that makes sense, right? No metal stakes used in the open water. And ultimately, your hook's got to be no more than three feet apart set horizontally. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of the basic stuff. Not much has changed over the years, but it's still some things that you need to be aware of. You know, and out on this lake, you know, when you're running trot lines and you got you do everything properly, it's going to be visible. Chances are somebody's going to run your line for you. And hopefully they just don't steal it. Somebody's been running our line and baiting it, but they don't steal it. They just bait it and they're probably weekend folks. We do all our stuff during the week to try to avoid that, but they've been baiting it. I guess they've been coming back and running it, but at least they've been leaving the gear, you know? And, and that's okay, because one time we went out there and it was baited. Uh, we didn't bait it, and we pulled a couple fish off. You know, we just made it back before they did, so I guess that's the chance that they take. Well, guys, I certainly wish I had more on this video, but educational stuff is really what's the most important and really expressing time spent, uh, you know, dad and I on the water. We're having a lot of fun. Of course, like I said, not much for production when dad's on the water. If it gets in the way, it got to go. I do the best I can while we're out there, but we have a lot of fun. We're making memories. Hope you guys are doing the same thing. Thanks for joining me today, guys. If you enjoyed your time, just do me a huge favor and reach over, show some love, hit that subscribe button, and come back and see. We got a lot of other cool stuff we're gonna be doing this summer. We'll be back on those lines. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. Stay safe, stay healthy. Get out fish, hunt, love it, drop something, drag it out, and we'll see you on the next one. Uh, I'll see what you did there. Twice as many, way more than twice as many in that one, don't you?